How impressive was Tua Tagovailoa in this comfort behind victory over the Ravens? Dude, that that was the performance of his life. That was, I'm tired of people saying I can't throw. I'm tired of people having all these negative connotations attached to my my career. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to carry this franchise and I'm going to prove that I was worth that number five overall pick. And he did that. He put his money where his mouth is. Obviously, he had a slow start in the first half, but he was able to rebound and have a 469-yard performance. That was incredible. A passer rating of over 124. Obviously, like Kyle said, six touchdowns. Dude, he may not be someone who you can rely on to have games like this week in and week out, but when it mattered the most, he showed up, and they were able to put up 28 points in that fourth quarter. He shouldered the load, and he said, you know what? I got this. Put the ball in my hands. And I think that he performed well above expectations because, like Kyle said, they were down by so much early on. It was almost like you could have rode that out. You know what I'm saying? As a franchise and as a team, you could have been like, you know what? We're down 30-some points. Not that you don't try, but you kind of like elevate your your, your foot off the gas pedal just a little bit. You're like, you know, we're going to make some stuff work. We're going to look competitive. But... Baltimore, man, they had a lot of defensive breakdowns. They let Tyreek Hill basically run free in that second half. I mean, I believe he only had about 54 yards coming out of the third quarter, and then he ends up with a buck 90 and two touchdowns. Like, how do you let the fastest person in the league run past you? Like, I know it's easier said than done, but you have to know the majority of that man's routes got to be 20, 30 yards downfield. Like, Baltimore's secondary was getting absolutely torched and the offense they just weren't able to capitalize and move the ball effectively to where Miami's defense actually stepped up significantly to hold them uh and I thought that that was just an incredible team effort overall so I'm looking at this and I'm saying yeah the Dolphins came back from behind but Baltimore choked this game completely like they they were up multiple scores and they just could not hold on to this and I say that that's pretty bad and I'm not saying that Lamar turned it over or anything like that because he was 21 to 29 three touchdowns a passer rating of 142 like he had over 100 yards on the ground like we all know Lamar Jackson did his thing but you just have to look at this and say "Well, well they didn't even have a turnover like how do you manage to not move the football to get first downs to take clock away Play calling could have changed. They could have got conservative. They could have taken their foot off the gas pedal because they were up so much. It was a lot of defensive blown coverages, some great throws by Tua, and obviously, you know, the the, the Miami defense did what they needed to do to stop them. But, man, this was definitely, for me, I know that we had an incredible game on Thursday, but because of the intensity of the comeback of this game, this has to be the game of the week for me. Shout out to my little brother. Bro, I was not talking shit to him, but I was texting him that Tua was underthrowing some shit. And obviously, you know, he had a couple of balls that should have been a little bit more lead, but he got me right back. He said, at least, you know, at least we came back to win. You guys didn't even score. So again, you know, kudos to my brother, kudos to the Dolphins. What a game. Yeah. And Kevin, I mean, I'm with you 100% on this one. It looked like the Dolphins were dead in the water because at one point, Baltimore was up 35 to 14. Lamar Jackson was single handedly the MVP of this game at that point in time. I mean, it's like you said, when it came to passing, he only had eight incompletions, had over 300 yards passing, had three touchdowns, one of which was also on the ground on top of it. So he had four total touchdowns. And looking back at that first half, Baltimore played essentially a perfect first half. They scored 28 points. They only gave up seven to Miami. And then the second half, it was like the game entirely flipped in favor of Miami. And Miami never looked back. I have to say, the fact that Tua was able to put on the show that he did After that first half performance, because let's face it, uh, he had a shaky first half, had two interceptions to Marcus Williams in the first half. Uh, Miami, like I said, only scored seven points and it just didn't seem like the offense was in a rhythm. It just seemed like there was a lot of inconsistency. uh, There was a lot of inconsistency on that side of the ball and their defense, which had been great against New England in week one. I mean, they were getting blown apart by that Ravens offense, especially Lamar Jackson. And then in the second half, I mean, I don't know what happened. Maybe Mike McDaniel had a really good halftime speech to the team, and maybe they finally got everything together because that second half started, they started getting it together. The third quarter was a little bit of a split just because both teams scored a touchdown. But that fourth quarter, man, Miami turned it up, and they never looked back. And Kevin, like you said, the fact that Baltimore had so many defensive lapses, especially in their secondary, that's unacceptable. Game's well in hand at that point. You're up 35 to 14. You can't give up 28 points 
in the fourth quarter, despite the fact that, you know, Miami is actually capable of that. I wasn't even, I was actually kind of shocked that Miami actually was able to do that with Tua at the helm, just because there have been a lot of rumors flying around about Tua throughout not only last year, but this offseason about whether or not that he's the guy to lead Miami moving forward. Well, based off of this performance, you could basically put all that side talk to the side because, you know, throwing six touchdowns, that's incredible. And the fact that he was able to really rally the offense and not only get them back into the game to tie it, but to end up leading a game-winning drive by throwing the game-winning touchdown to Jalen Waddle with 10 or 15 seconds to go. Man, what a day from Tua. I mean, a fantastic day. Didn't have the hottest start, but man, sometimes it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And just a great game from him. I just The duo of freaking Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Man, this wide receiver duo is going to be something special if they can produce at this clip. Because like you said, you know, Tyreek had a buck 90. Jalen had 110. Between the two of them, they had 300 yards receiving. You could definitely tell that Tua and Tyreek and Jalen, th- those guys are all on the same page. And that's probably going to be a solid relationship moving forward with all those three guys. If they're able to build off of what they did in this game and just improve the chemistry from here on out, Miami could be a real threat this year. But just for this game itself, man, what a comeback from Miami. And Baltimore, they got to look themselves in the mirrors like, how the hell did we let this one slip? Because this was well in their hand, and they just got freaking ran roughshod by Miami in the fourth quarter. Good on Miami, but Baltimore, that's going to be a tough film session uh, this upcoming week when they have to watch that film of them getting torched in the fourth quarter.